All right, here we go. Each of the following words or phrases gives you information about time, position, velocity, or acceleration. Sometimes speed. So let's go ahead and see if we can identify the information that's being given to us. All right, initially. Okay, when you see the word initially, what is that telling you? Well, hopefully you've learned in past math and science classes that initially means first or beginning or at the start. So at the start means that time is zero. All right, so initially means that time equals zero. All right, at the origin. At the origin, okay, at the origin means that displacement is zero. Remember when we talk about displacement or position, we're talking about the displacement from the origin. And so if we are at the origin, the displacement or the distance from the origin is zero. All right, on the ground, okay, well on the ground usually is used when we're throwing things up in the air, right? Which means that the ground is considered the origin. And so as it goes up in the air and comes back down, then we're going back to the same thing. So distance equals zero, or the displacement equals zero when it's on the ground. All right? Stationary. OK, when something is stationary, that means that the velocity for that instant is zero. OK, now it's important that you recognize that this is the instantaneous velocity. OK, this doesn't tell you where it is, because it could be anywhere in stationary. Nor does it tell you if it's speeding up or slowing down, because it could at that instant have finished slowing down, but be about to speed up in the other direction. And so we can't really answer that question about acceleration, but we do know at this instant, if it is stationary right now, its velocity is zero. If it's stationary over a period of time, then that means that the velocity is consistently zero, therefore the acceleration is also zero. Changes direction. Okay, I think the best way to think about this is a ball going up in the air. Something goes up in the air and then comes back down. When it changes direction right here at the top, what do we know? Well, we know that the velocity is zero because it has a positive velocity as it's going up, has a negative velocity as it goes down. Somewhere in between, it's going zero. It's not just going to magically go from going up to all of a sudden going down. It has to have that instant, that fractionally small, infinitesimally small instant where it's not moving up at the top. That will be important in many situations. Maximum height, again, is talking about this maximum height, which means, again, the velocity is zero. As, as it's turning around. Now keep in mind, I'm sorry, as, as, if it's going sideways as it turns around, again, at that turning point, it's got to have a velocity of zero, regardless of whether it's up, down, or side, side. Constant velocity, of course, means that the velocity is constant. It also means that the acceleration is zero, because if the velocity is not changing, therefore, there's no acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity. All right, it doesn't tell us anything about the time or the position. It just tells us that the speed is constant. Okay, and the direction. Velocity is speed and direction. Minimum, minimum velocity. So when it's at a minimum velocity, okay, so here's my velocity graph. Minimum velocity means this vertex down here. Now remember, this is a velocity graph where it's zero. You see how it's flat down there at the bottom? That means, again, there's no acceleration when it's at its minimum velocity. All right? All right, let's do an application. Particle moves in a straight line with position relative to some origin O given by this function. Find expressions for the particle's velocity and acceleration and draw sign diagrams for each of them. Okay, so let's do velocity first. I'm going to do it up here at the top so I don't run out of space later. So velocity is the first derivative. So I'm going to bring the 3 in front, right? Bring the 3 in front, which makes it a 3t, subtract 1, so 3t squared, and then minus 3 because that's t to the first. The 1 comes in front and becomes a 0, so the t goes away. Of course, the derivative of a constant is 0, 
So velocity is 3t squared minus 3. Now, in order to do the sine diagram, we need to figure out where that equals 0. So we're going to go 0 equals, now I'm going to start factoring this already, t squared minus 1. I noticed there was a common factor, so I'm going to pull that out. And so then I should be able to say, okay, that's the same thing as 3 times t plus 1, t minus 1. And so when I have that, I know that at t1 and t negative 1, so 1 and negative 1, that's my critical values for my derivative. Okay. Now, where is the derivative positive and negative? Well, if I put 0 in, that would be positive. This would be negative, which means I would have a negative. Okay. Positive then on each side because neither of those are double roots. So plus and plus. So that means, now remember when I'm drawing this graph, I'm thinking about the original function. So my original function is going up then my original function is going down, and then my original function is going up again, right? So this is telling me about the slopes of the original function. Now, if I wanted to draw f prime of x, the derivative, then it would be positive, it would be negative, and it would be positive, which would give me the quadratic that I'm supposed to be looking for. So learn to differentiate between when you're using a sine diagram to create the original function and when you're using a sine diagram to create... Um, the derivative graph, because both of those are valuable. Okay, now we need to do the acceleration. Acceleration, of course, is the derivative of the velocity, so we'll bring the 2 in front, making it a 6t. Derivative of the minus 3 is 0, so we've got the acceleration. Um, that one will be a little bit easier, because when acceleration is 0, t has to be 0, so the number line will be quite easy. So we'll put the 0 down. If I put a negative number in, I get a negative. If I get positive, I get positive. Now, what does this tell me about my original function? It tells me it's concave down here, and it tells me that it's concave up here, which fits in with what we said earlier with it going up and then going down and then going up again. And so these two things should show me exactly the same thing as long as the graph that I'm drawing is my original function. So the, the sine diagram is for f double prime, but the lines that I'm drawing on here represent the original function. All right? Find the initial conditions and hence describe the motion at this instant. Okay? Well, initial conditions is when time equals 0. So if I put 0 in, I'm going to get s equals 1, which means that I'm to the right of the origin. Okay? If I put 0 in for v, that's going to be 3 times 0 squared, which is 0 minus 3. I'm going to get a negative 3, which means moving at 3 centimeters per second to the left. And then if I put 0 in for t, I'm going to get a 0 for acceleration, which means I'm not speeding up or slowing down at that point. My velocity is instantaneously constant. All right? So now we look at describe the motion of the particle at 2 seconds. Okay, so now we'll plug in 2. We'll plug in 2 to the original function. 2 to the third power is 8. Minus 3 times 2, which is 6. So 8 minus 6 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So s equals 3. So I'm 3 centimeters to the right of the origin. If I put 2 in for the velocity, that will be 2 squared, which is 4, times 3 is 12, minus 3 is 9. So v equals 9 centimeters per second, which means I'm moving to right. Okay, and then uh, when time equals 2, my acceleration is 2 times 6, which would be 12 centimeters per second squared. And so that means my acceleration is to the right, my velocity is to the right, therefore I am speeding up. All right, anytime, remember your acceleration, your velocity are in the same direction, you are speeding up. All right, find the position of the particle when changes in direction occur. Now what did we say in the previous slides? When it changes direction, it is now going to have a velocity 
of 0 at that direction change. So we've actually already solved for that. So that's at negative 1 and 1. What it asks for is the position. So let's go ahead and come down here. We know it's when time equals 1 and negative 1. So now we need to find the position. So the position, if we plug it in here, sorry, plug is a really bad word for that, but you know what, I don't really care. So 1 to the third power is 1. Minus 3 times 1 would be minus 3. So that's negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So at one second, my position is negative 1. And then if I plug in a negative 1 here, if I substitute a negative 1, that would be negative 1 plus 3 plus 1. So that would be positive 3. So those correlate as such. All right. And then draw a motion diagram for the particle. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of put all this together. So um, I know at time 0, Let's, let's just put down a couple of marks, and we'll do as best we can. Now, motion diagrams in physics are usually a little bit more detailed than this. We're just going to go ahead and do what the IB math says. So at time 0, we said that I was at 1. So this is time 0. Remember that this is showing my x values, my position. Okay. So I start one centimeter to the right, but remember at time one I'm moving to the left, so I'm going this way. Now at one second I get to negative one, but I turn around there, so I turn around this way. So that's time equals one second. Okay, now time equals negative one we're not going to look at because we're only looking at time is greater than zero. So I turn around, I'm coming back the other way. At time two, I'm now at 3 centimeters, 0, 1, 2, 3. So here's time equals 2. So you don't really have to write the t's down here because just by putting the dots, you're saying this is second 0, second 1, second 2. And then we continue in this direction, obviously speeding up. At that point, I'm going 9 centimeters a second, which means I'm going to be way off my chart by the time I finally get there. So all this sign diagram is, all this uh, motion diagram is showing us is that we're starting here, starting moving to the left. We turn around and then we go to the right, speeding up. And you can see how it's getting farther and farther apart, which is showing that we're speeding up. All right. Uh, for what time intervals is the particle's speed increasing? So remember, increasing speed is when the acceleration and the velocity are in the same direction. So right here, I have a negative acceleration, right? Anything before zero. So anything before zero, where it's negative, you see that's right here? See how there's some negative velocity between negative one and zero? That means that we're speeding up there. However, we are only concerned with time greater than or equal to zero, which means, of course, that means that this piece doesn't really matter. The acceleration is still negative here, but now my velocity, sorry, sorry, acceleration is negative up to the zero after the zero, my acceleration is positive, velocity is negative. So it's not until one second that I start to have a velocity that's positive and an acceleration that is positive. All right, at that point, after x equals 1, or t equals 1, sorry, so t is greater than or equal to 1, that is where we are speeding up or increasing speed. Okay. Now, again, that increasing speed came from here, right? It came from the fact that my acceleration was positive, and for values greater than 1, my velocity was also positive. Remember, when your velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, you're speeding up. When they're in opposite directions, the acceleration is going to cause a change in your velocity such that it slows down. Okay, what is the total distance traveled and the time from t equals 0 to t equals 2? Well, Really, if you've drawn the motion diagram, this is really easy because we start here. We go one, two, three, four, five, six. You've gone six centimeters. And that's an easy question to answer. If you hadn't drawn the motion diagram, you would have to find the distance from zero to one because that's the turning point. And then you would have to find the distance from one to two. 
and you would have to add those two together, which isn't all that difficult, but with the motion diagram, you can just count it off and add it up really quickly. So anyway, um, that's all for this application. I hope that was helpful in kind of starting to put things together, and uh, I will attempt to put another video up soon. Ciao. Have fun.